Recording. Episode 12 of Rocco on the Rocks. Action. Cue the music. What's up, rock stars? Welcome to another episode of Rocco on the Rocks. By the time everyone listens to this episode, it will be my sister's wedding. I will probably be standing on the altar right next to her because I'm her man of honor, and it is going to be a day of just love and excitement for her and her fiance, and I'm so, so excited to be standing next to her on this day and to really just be shaking my ass out there on the dance floor. I'm so excited. So this episode is dedicated to my sister and her fiance. I'm also going to discuss, you know, throughout this episode, because it's going to be a little wedding themed, I'm going to talk about how I properly do a wedding. For those of you who have never been, maybe you could take a few tips and tricks from me. And I think I'm also going to share to you guys my man of honor speech because I've worked on it for a while. And for some of you who obviously aren't going to be there, I figured I might as well share it. It could be inspiration for those of you who do have to write a best man or man of honor speech or a maid of honor speech. So this one is really just some fun tips and tricks. We're going to talk about wedding things and we're just going to enjoy ourselves. For our scrump or dump menu today, we are trying Sprinter, the vodka soda brand that Kylie Jenner started. And I'm excited because actually today that this episode drops, I believe... These will also be dropping in store. So we are starting off our scrumper dump with the lime flavor sprinter. Now, I know a lot of you, or I've seen a lot on, um, let's do some ASMR. That was nice. I'm pouring it into a glass of water because I did not chill these when I had gotten them. I know a lot of people have been saying that You know, they're so intrigued as to why Kylie started a vodka soda brand only because, you know, Kendall has 818 and that's tequila and you always see Kylie drinking 818. But I really do think that that's just because, you know, she's supporting her sister, even though in one of the episodes, the classic like, I'm about to get wasted, that line that she always has. When she says she finishes a whole glass of 42, I believe she's talking about Don Julio tequila 1942. So right then and there you know that she you know drinks tequila often so this is new for her but hey i'm not kylie so maybe on the low she drinks vodka sodas so i'm excited to try this and maybe maybe i'm the i'm the first to get it i'm definitely not but okay we're going in with the lime flavor right now so cheers rock stars let's see if it's a scrumper dump Ooh. That's a scrump. Guys. Wow. I usually don't like... Like, I'm not the biggest fan of High Noon, only because I find that the a- there's an aftertaste to them, and they also have an odor. Like, if you, you can smell the flavoring in them, or at least I can. So I don't love the High Noons because of that. But these, there's not really a scent to them. And it's a light, light flavoring of lime. Like this is a very, very refreshing drink. Okay, the lime is a scrump. I think I'm gonna try each one of these. I'm gonna do little taste testers. But they are, oh, 4.5% alcohol in a 355 milliliter can. That's pretty good. Oh, and it's only 100 calories, gluten-free. Obviously no sugar added, it says. Wow, sprint to the good times. I like that. The bottle says, say hello to Sprinter, a bold and juicy mix of real fruit juice, premium vodka, and sparkling water. It's your plus one for fun. Your can for every plan, your new main squeeze. Sprinter. I love that. Oh, that's a fun, catchy saying. Kylie, props to you. You did really well on this brand, I have to say. So far, the lime's a scrump. I love it. Wow. Okay. That's a pretty good... That's a pretty good drink. I might switch over to these when I don't want to make my vodka sodas for myself or when I don't want to make my tequila seltzers for myself um, at a pregame. I I could definitely show up with the pack of this. This is pretty good. 
I don't, I wish I knew the price. I don't know the price of these, unfortunately, because my mom picked these up for me. So shout out to you, Lee. Thanks so much for getting those. But anyway, okay, let's dive in. Let's talk some wedding things. This episode might be quick because like I said, it's wedding week. I'm recording this the week of the wedding and I got a lot to do. I got to go to bed. I got to rest and I got a lot to do when I wake up in the morning because I'm the man of honor and I have some duties to fulfill. So let's dive in. Typically as a guest, I do not pregame weddings. In this case of my sister's wedding, it's completely different because A, I will be there getting ready and having mimosas on hand, so I will be pregaming for sure. Plus giving my speech later on in the evening, I'm gonna need a little liquid courage. I can do a speech in front of like 100 random people because to me, I don't know any of you. So if I mess up, it's cool. But doing a speech in front of your family has to be it has to be the scariest thing in the world because they all know you. And if you mess up, like, hi, next, next family holiday, someone's going to bring it up. And, you know, Italians, they're going it, to, it'll never go away. It will never go away. So it's kind of, it, there's a lot of pressure. And I got to make sure that it's good. I did write out my speech beforehand. So I'm set there. And I've been practicing it here and there as well. So I think I'm going to be okay and it's going to be pretty good. So I'm excited to share it with you guys later on. But like I said, as a guest, I usually don't pregame. Always what I wear to a wedding or what I've worn in the past is a black suit. You can never go wrong. Black suit, black tie, white shirt, simple. Keep your shoes black, your jewelry, silver or gold. You know, you can mix and match. I don't hate mixing jeweler mixing metals that's not an issue for me i think it's nice i think if you could do it properly too like say less i love that i look forward to that but i think for guys the best way to go if you're showing up to a wedding whether it's black tie or not just have a black suit on hand and that's what you should wear depending on the season obviously but standard that's good to go now my sister's wedding is black tie formal so women have to wear floor length dresses or t-length dresses and their dress also has to be black honestly i gotta give it to my sisters because they did it right like the two of them saying that they want that as their dress code it just makes it so much easier for all their guests because everyone shows up in all black and it's just so everyone looks good in all black you know you can't go wrong with it it's a beautiful color and it's gorgeous on everyone is very slimming it's stunning i love it so i'm excited to see what everyone's gonna wear because that's my favorite part but regardless that's usually what i like to wear i'll be wearing a tux my tux is black obviously and i will be wearing a bow tie as well so that's what the guys are wearing and the girls the bridesmaids are in black dresses as well i'll tell you a little secret i guess for those of you who are showing up my sisters my sister and her fiance are both wearing white So my sister's fiance is in a white dress and my sister is in a white tuxedo, white jacket, black pants. They are going to look gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. I'm so, 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 so excited for them. And they don't know obviously what either one is wearing. So that's going to be really exciting to when they do the first look and everything. And also everyone who's coming to the wedding doesn't know that my sister is in white either. I think they think that she's in black because she's wearing a tux. But anyway, that's usually what I like to wear. When I get into the wedding, I like to scout out to see where everyone's sitting first. Um, If I'm showing up with friends, obviously you're gonna sit with your friends, gonna sit a few aisles back, sit on the side you're supposed to sit, enjoy the wedding, watch her walk down the aisle, do the vows, the whole nine yards. That's, That's simple and basic. I don't need to explain that to you guys. I personally do cry sometimes when, you know, it's time to kiss your partner, but That's just me. That's because I'm a hopeless romantic. But so I look forward to that. Now, this is where my tips and tricks are going to help you. When cocktail hour starts, okay, this is where you need to really focus because it's going to set you up to have the best night. And if you like to drink like I do and you go out on the weekends and you party all night long, listen to my tips and tricks to help you survive a wedding. So cocktail hour for us, I believe, is going to start at 630. Now, cocktail hour is when I like to start mixing in my water, okay? I like to do, but instead of water, it's going to be food. So one hors d'oeuvre per one sip, all right? One to one ratio here. One hors d'oeuvre you grab, take it, eat it, 
take a sip of your drink, okay? That's how you're going to keep yourself full for the night. You're going to go up to each station and do that. So, you know, fill up a plate per station, but each station, make sure you have a drink and don't move on to the next station until you finish your drink. The hors d'oeuvres that are coming around though, that's like when you're really mixing in that water really quick, right? You're grabbing it, pop, take a sip. All right. That's how we are going to keep ourselves full so that when it comes down to when the cocktail hour ends and we go inside for the dances and the speeches, that's when you're actually mixing in your water because for 30 minutes, you're sitting. The bar typically is closed on the outside, so you can't go in for another drink. If you have your drink, you finish it during the dances or the speeches. Actually, you can't finish it because you need it to toast, but there should be champagne on the table, and if there's not, keep it for yourself. And when you're at your table and you're watching the dances and everything, and you're listening to the speeches, start mixing in your water. Okay, this is when we hydrate. This is when we replenish, and we start feeling good. Now our buzz is not necessarily wearing off, but like we're going to be hitting autopilot soon, okay? Once the music hits, I'm out on the dance floor. I'm booking it. Like, sayonara. This is where I'm staying for most of the night. And because... I dance all night long. I'm sweating out everything I'm drinking. So I'll bring my drink out on the dance floor, but at least for like two, two to three songs, if the music's really good, like once my drink's done, I'll stay out on the dance floor, two to three songs, no drink, sweat it all out, walk myself over to the bar to then get my other drink. Okay. It's, it's strategic. It's strategy here. Like we can't be playing games. We have an open bar for basically four hours. Like we are getting our money's worth. And we're getting their money's worth. That's what we're here for as guests, okay? We're going to enjoy our night. Also, in terms of being a part of a wedding party, it is your job to get the party started, honestly. So get everyone out on the dance floor. Pull people in. Be fun with it. Do the lasso. Reel them in. Okay, go fishing, right? Like, get the party started. Get the crowd bumping. You have to have a good time. That's what everyone's there for. So just enjoy it. And live it up, honestly. That's what it's all about. So I think also an unwritten rule as the party is to get like in a bridal party is to get the party started and don't, don't be a stick in the mud. Okay. Shake your ass, shake your ass the entire night on the dance floor and live it the fuck up. All right. So I like to dance two to three songs, no drink, sweat it out, you know, then at that point. Find someone on the dance floor, see who needs a drink, see who's sitting down, right? Start slowly walking over, exiting if you're in the, the center, you know, step, step yourself out, scout out the crowd, see who needs another drink, go up to them, mingle, and then the two of you go and get a drink together, right? Then at the bar, cool yourself down a little bit, maybe mix in a water if you're feeling it, get yourself a drink, start slowly working your way back into the ballroom, then when you're there, Again, bring your drink back out on the dance floor, dance a little bit, put your drink down if you want at your table. Again, two, three, four songs if you're feeling it, just kill it, break it down, all right? Break it down on the dance floor and have a good time. This, if you keep this strategy, you'll be good. You will be set for the entire night and you'll be guaranteed to not throw up probably, (laughs) depending on how you could hold your alcohol. This is, you know, just preference, all right? I'm kind of just saying this because this is my experience in the past, but, you know, this ain't for everyone. So if you can't hold your alcohol, don't do this. Maybe, you know, know your limits, people, but this is just me chatting out here, all right? I'm trying to give you a generic game plan. But anyway, once dessert comes, this is when the coffee comes in, all right? So when you're mixing in your water, it's coffee at this point. Now you're waking your body up. It's like, ah, all right. We got a couple more hours left in us. We can do this, all right? It's that final stretch. We're hitting our last lap and we're good. So at this point, I always get an espresso. I don't do the shots of Sambuca if that's given because that's where, this is where people mess up because it's the sugar that's going around. And once you throw sugar in with alcohol, vomit. Personally, for me, I'm going to vomit everywhere. So no, 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 no. I won't be doing any of that. I will probably just be having my espresso and maybe a bite of the cake because that's you know for good luck and i'm trying to make sure that they have many years of happiness the lovely couple so 
And that's kind of my game plan going forward on how I like to do a wedding. This is just, you know, for me. But that's pretty much my game plan. I think it's solid. It's worked for me in the past. It's pretty good. And I've gone to a lot of weddings. I have a lot of cousins. They all get married. And now my sister's finally getting married. So I've had some practice. I've also been to one of my friend's weddings before. There I did even better. Oh my gosh. Because at that, I really only knew her and like some of her friends. So like, it was like, uh, I was back out at the club. I was like, oh, that one I was really going crazy for. So I liked that a lot. But anyway, I've had practice many years of it. And these are just my tips and tricks that help. I've also ripped my pants before at a wedding because I've been dancing too hard. I was actually my friend Caroline's date. And <laughs> I remember I did a back handspring on the dance floor. And when I had, you know, landed, I kind of felt to myself, um, I think my pants are tearing. And, you know, I'm, I'm always like, Shaking my ass a little bit. At one point, I was throwing it back, and um, I heard the split. I heard the pants go, and I was like, ooh, I think, I think I just ripped my pants. Sure enough, I totally did, and I actually couldn't dance at all on the dance floor the rest of the night. Well, it didn't stop me. That's a lie. I continued to dance and just was, you know, making sure Caroline was near me to cover it up, or I wasn't really going in the middle anymore at that point, because I really would have flashed everyone, but... I would say too, for this is probably more so for girls, but clearly it does happen for men as well. Bring a sewing kit. Bring it. You never know what's going to tear. And if you're me, things will tear for sure. Without a doubt, things will tear. So bring a sewing kit. That's always good. I'm trying to think of what else you should bring. Bring, um... For the morning after, if you're staying at the hotel, usually the hotel will also have an after party. At this point, get like a seltzer or something or water at that point. Like do not drink anymore because you'll probably start hiccuping. And at that point, people are just going to tell you to go to bed and you want to stay up and party with everyone. So maybe, you know, mix in more water there. Uh, bring Advil or Tylenol, whatever you need for a headache in the morning to help a hangover. I personally have yet to master the proper cure to a hangover. I have no idea what that is because personally I just lay there and rot and feel like absolute garbaggio. So if you can find, or if you could put in the comments what you do to help cure a hangover, please share, please share because I'll try it the next time and I'll let you know if it works because I'm really searching for it personally. Uh, so yeah, those are, again, kind of my tips and tricks for surviving a wedding if you're going as a guest, if you're going as a date for someone, do that. You're guaranteed to have a good night. And always make sure you hug the lovely couple that you're going to celebrate and tell them that they look absolutely gorgeous and just thank them for the invite overall because it's really sweet that they are thinking of you to come um, and celebrate this day with them. Before I get to my speech, I do want to say, I do say this all in good fun, okay? celebrate a wedding however you want to celebrate it all right these are just my tips and tricks you don't have to take them and please be responsible and pace yourself okay don't don't drink the whole time that you're a sloppy mess and you ruin it for the lovely couple no one wants that and you don't want that okay i'm just giving some fun lighthearted tips for you to take and that's all all right you don't actually have to do it and you know please just know your limits and make sure that you are on your best behavior for a wedding, but enjoy your time overall. Also, I want to, before I go to my speech, I want to bring up as well, picking out a walkout song, if that's your job, is extremely hard, okay? I had to pick it out for my sister, and I also had to work on it with the maid of honor. It's not the easiest because sometimes the couple wants the song that you want to walk out to to also play during the wedding, so you have to keep that in mind sometimes when picking out the song. A classic that I think everyone should walk out to is Let's Get Loud. You can never go wrong. J-Lo, Say Less, like classic, standard walkout song. Personally, I would love to walk out to Crazy in Love, but that's also like my song on the dance floor, so 
I like to really bust it out when that song comes on and it's time for me to perform. But anyway, that is just another thing I wanted to bring up in terms of the walkout song. If you're in a party, just be on your best behavior. Help the couple in anything that they need. Make sure everyone's having a good time. And most of all, make sure you're also having a good time. But again, drink responsibly, everyone. If you're going to a wedding, be smart. Uber, don't drive. And if you're driving, please don't drink. Be safe. Be responsible out on the road. We're all old enough when we're going to a wedding to realize these things, but I just want to reiterate. So now we're moving on to my man of honor speech. I think I'm going to share it with you guys again, like I said, for some inspo for any of you. And, you know, if you really want to know what I say that day, this is what I'm going to say. I have to, you know, give a huge shout out to my best friend, Caitlin, my creative director, I always say at the end of the show, because she did help me with this speech. You know, we sat together at a coffee shop. I wrote it out. She helped me tweak a little few things here and there. So I think it's a good one. I'm excited to be sharing it with everyone today. And it was at first I was really nervous because you don't want to have a long speech. You want to keep it short. I would say like two, two minutes is like your, your goal. If you're at three, you're good. But two minutes is like the golden ticket. Okay. I think that's the best speech someone could give quick two minutes, two paragraphs, talk about whoever you're closest with first, then move on to their partner, sum it up, say thank you for coming, cheers, let's toast, call it a day. Include a few, you know, sob stories and include some jokes. You want a little mix of everything, some tear jerkers, some laughs, and you're set. Mine's at two minutes and 30 seconds, kind of just like speaking it. So I know the day of it might be the three minute mark for sure. Um, but I've been, pra- I'm trying to practice it a little bit before. So A, I could kind of avoid crying because I know I'm going to. And B, um, I want to make sure I just like know what I'm saying. This is a personal preference. Again, some people wing it. I've like asked a lot of people for advice because I was like, oh, this is one thing I'm nervous about doing. And I know a lot of people wing it. I personally don't think I'm the type to wing it. I like to plan it out. But if I think you go around the outline of keep it two paragraphs, keep it two minutes, include some tear jerkers, include some jokes, you're good to go. Like you're guaranteed a good speech. So that's what I did for this one. And I'm excited to share it with you all. Again, like I said, I will probably have some liquid courage with me. But before we move on, I'm going to be trying now the peach flavor of the Sprinter. This is peach. Nice. Just a little. Because I want to see what this tastes like. These are really good, guys. I have to say. Kylie did a great job on these. Okay, peach flavor. It smells really good. Yeah, that's a scrump. Wow. Whew. All right, she, she's guys. I know, I know. People are probably gonna be like, of course. "You're just saying it's good." No, it actually is really good. The flavoring is really subtle. That tastes divine. I must say. Okay, I'm grabbing my laptop so I could share my speech with you guys. Okay. Oh my God. And this is going to be so fun too, because I have my soundboard so I can use my applause and my laughter on here to mimic how the day's going to go. This is me manifesting like a job well done. Okay. So everyone take it easy on me. Okay. So, uh, and I, and I have a mic that I could practice on. Okay. This is going to be me holding it. I wouldn't actually hold it like this, but this is probably as real as practice as I'm ever going to get. So I'm excited to do this. Okay. Ready? Okay. Now we're starting the speech. At this point, the DJ will hand me the mic. I would first like to thank all of you for coming to celebrate this lovely couple right here. Let's give them a round of applause. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Rocco. I'm Christina's younger brother. I know some people confuse me for being the older siblings out of the two of us. But I think that's just because I'm taller, and Christina has more supple skin than I do. You gotta give me your skincare routine, because I could use a little touch-up. 
You know, growing up, people used to confuse us as twins, and it still happens to this day. I'm genuinely honored that people confuse us for being the same person, because Christina has so many meaningful qualities that I admire and wish to possess. You are driven, inspiring, radiant, and at times funnier than me. Sometimes at work I do get scared saying I'm your brother, because your work ethic is way better than mine. <laughs> but regardless, you give such power to our last name. I cherish all of our memories together, listening to ABBA, watching Mamma Mia, trying different restaurants, and especially when we were little kids, we would sneak each other's known as cookies from the fridge before dinner so no one else would notice. I loved going to all your games, whether it was basketball or softball, and cheering you on from the stands. If anyone knows my sister, she is the most competitive person. My favorite games were when her team would win because if they didn't, no one was allowed to speak on the car ride home. Christina, I can't thank you enough for always having my back and for being my biggest supporter throughout life. I want you to know that I will always be your cheerleader on and off the field. As we get older, I look forward to continuing to do all these things with you and now our growing family. I remember one time my mom asked Christina and I if we would ever want another sibling. Christina's response was immediately now. She felt that her and I had the perfect relationship and that we didn't need another sibling. I had agreed with her. But I did always think of what life would be like if we had another Pecorero in the family. I would want them to be kind, good-looking, charming. Oops, sorry, these are all qualities about myself. <laughs> but in all honesty, a Pecorero needs to be able to handle a dry sense of humor that most of this family possesses, and to be sure to tell my mother and sister that they are always right. And if my father's in the garage, know not to go in there and bother him. This is something I am still working on, only because I like to push buttons. They need to be able to hang out with Nona, but never forget I'm her favorite next to my cousin Amanda. And most importantly, they need to be able to drink espresso after every meal. I'm very happy to say that Drew fits all of these qualities, including the good looks. She is truly a smart, selfless, beautiful, and genuine person inside and out. And I am honored to have another sibling and to be able to call you my sister. Welcome to the family. Everyone, if you could please hold up your glasses for a toast to the bride and bride, wishing you both a lifetime of happiness. And that, everyone, is my Man of Honor speech. It's simple, it's short, I read it a little slow, you know, and you have to kind of add in for the times of when people are gonna laugh, so I'm kind of happy I had the soundboard to do that. But regardless, that's my speech. You guys can use it if you want as well, if it you know aligns to your siblings who are getting married and such. But that's what you wanna shoot for. Some sentimental moments, some laughs, and overall, love throughout. So I'm happy I got to share that with you all. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if you like it. And if you don't, that's fine. I don't really care. All right. Let's try these last two before we close out our episode. Moving on to grapefruit right now. This is grapefruit. OK, grapefruit. That's a scrump too. Jesus, Kylie. Damn, you did a good job. Again, scent, subtle, not too bad. Very, very nice. It's not potent, nothing. Ugh, this is a good, good drink. God damn. I'm not even exaggerating. It's very simple. It's very good. All right. Now we're moving on to black cherry. I personally hate black cherry. I usually hate all flavors of black cherry. And I don't know if I'm going to like this one. Mm, I'm scared. Just a little taste. Black cherry. Cheers. That's good. Damn. Yeah, that's a scrump too. Holy shit. Kylie, I gotta give you props. You made a good ash drink. Everyone try Sprinter, because it's very good. All right, and I think that's our show. Tried our drinks, closed it off. I shared my speech with you all. 
I shared you some tips and tricks on how I like to do a wedding so that I can know I can enjoy my drinks as well as survive it and not be you know, a sloppy mess and have to be carried out of the place. I think if you follow my tips and tricks, you'll do a good job. Everyone, oh, and I didn't say this, but be sure to eat the dinner because you're gonna fill up on cocktail hour, but then the dinner is gonna come and the salads, eat it. You're gonna need the, the substance and the fuel so you could keep going and dancing if that's your thing to do throughout a wedding. So don't forget to do that because I know I really only talked about cocktail hour. The, the dinner is important too, okay? But anyway, that's our show. I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to give some shout outs. Honestly, the only shout out I'm giving on today's episode is to my sister and her fiance, Christina and Drew. Like I said in my speech, I'm wishing you guys a lifetime of happiness. And I couldn't be happier for the two of you. I'm so excited that this day is finally here and I get to stand next to you, Christina, at the altar, you know, supporting you and supporting Drew as well on this adventure you guys are going to take. Love you both with all my heart. Shout out to you guys. This episode's dedicated to you. I can't wait to dance my ass off and just enjoy the night. Rock stars, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Rock on the Rocks. Be sure to like and subscribe this on YouTube and follow us on Instagram at rocko.ontherocks. That is all for this week's episode. I hope you all have a fabulous, fabulous day. I will see you all next week. Remember to always be your best self. Do not forget to smile. Life's what you make it, so let's make it rock, rock stars. Thank you, everyone.